Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, welcome back to my channel. I'm back with a video on software defined radio. Going to radio companion. Uh, we're going to look at um, the functionality of a mixer. I made a video on it already, uh, but this time this is going to be a little bit different as uh, because this is going to be in comparison with uh, how does your RTLSDR dongle or your software defined radio f uh, works. Uh, because we also have ADC and then we'll have also have some type of anti-aliasing anti filter uh, that we normally use in uh, in your radio design process. So the idea is quite simple. I have a signal source uh, which is being mixed using a multiplier circuit. So what I'm going to do, uh, so the first thing that I have right here is actually a signal source that is being controlled by a, a QT a GUI entry block. Uh, where I have a tone frequency which is being set to 10 mega sample uh, 10 megahertz. I also have my sample rate to be 40 mega samples per second. Uh, it is going to a throttle block, and both of these throttle block uh, after the throttle block, this is going to a GUI time sync and GUI frequency sync. Nothing fancy going on here. Uh, next, we're taking another signal. I'm calling that a local oscillator signal that is being controlled by this uh, GUI entry, which is right here. Uh, local frequency in megahertz that is 9.8 gig uh, 9.8 uh, megahertz that's the frequency amplitude of both of these blocks are same about uh, one uh, volt uh, next is both of these after the throttle block because since I'm running a simulation you gotta have your throttle block there so and I'm operating at in a real uh, float values so the output is going into a multiplier block the output is going into a QT GUI, uh, GUI time sync, and it's also going into that QT GUI frequency sync right here. Uh, and next, so what this part will do, uh, let me run the flow graph and then I'll explain this. So what it will try to do, it will try to mix up a signal that is 10 mega samples, which is going to be your RF signal and mix it with your local oscillator signal. And the operational mixer goes like this, that when you multiply two signals together, uh, you'll also have FC plus um, FRF, my, uh, FLO minus FRF minus FLO, FRF plus FLO. That's the operation it works. Because uh, if you take a cosinusoidal wave or a sinusoidal wave, when you mix them together, um, you'll get uh, FC plus FM and FC minus FM, as you guys already know that, using your trig identity. So let's first visualize that part. Uh, I'm going to simply run this flow graph now. And after running this flow graph, uh, let's quickly look at it. Uh, so here's the operation. Uh, so this is the input. Uh, these inputs are being called by uh, this. These are the input blocks. So where I have my input signal going into a throttle block. And this is the, out, uh, this is the output that you're looking at it in terms of your time sync and in terms of your GUI frequency sync. So this is your input. So this is the signal that I'm sending, which is about 10 mega sample, 10 megahertz of signal that looks something like this because the high frequency signal. That's why it looks something like this. And then you will also see your frequency as well. That is about uh, 10 megahertz, uh, 10 megahertz, which is your input signal. Now, when you mix them together, this is where the mixing is taking place right here. After mixing takes place, we're going to look at after the mixing part. Uh, so let me just quickly bring this up. Uh, let me make this bigger as possible for you guys to see. And uh, so let's look at the mixer output. So the mixer output is going to be based something like this. So let me stop this for a moment. Let me stop this. Uh, let me go click, go to rate one, signal one. Don't worry about that uh, red line yet. Uh, just worried about the first one, which is in blue. So let me just turn this off. Uh, let's just focus on that. So let's go to signal one. Go to marker. Let's do like circles, and then uh, let me zoom in on it. Um, so there's a lot of samples, about 40 mega samples per second. So this is how your signal looks like. Now, uh, just by looking at it, I have a signal that is 10 megahertz, 10 megahertz, and I have a local frequency that is 9.8 megahertz. So 10 minus 9.8 would give me 200 kilohertz of signal, and 10 plus 9.8 would give me 19.8 kilohertz. That's when the modulation or the mixing is taking place. So when I look at this, indeed I would see something like this, that I have somewhere around here, I am at 9.8, 19.8. And uh, at here, we're at somewhere around 200 kilohertz. 
so around here around 200 kilohertz somewhere around there so it's post around approximately exactly at 200 kilohertz something like this all right uh, let's let's mix it again let's change my LO frequency to be 9.7 when I click on 9.7 I hit enter I would see a signal low signal because it's uh, FLO oh, sorry uh, F my tone frequency minus my local local oscillator frequency, I should get about 300 kilohertz, which is called down sampling, and this is called up sampling. Now, now what I want to do normally when I'm designing these receivers, I'm only interested in the lower part, which means only this frequency right here, this part of the frequency. We want to actually reject this frequency. So for that purpose, I need some type of a filtering, all right, because I want to keep only the lower in at down sampling in down sampling we are only interested in the lower part of the frequency not the upper part of the frequency just the lower part of the frequency so in order for me to keep that which is normally called in a receiver design intermediate frequency uh what do we do um, let's apply some type of filter uh so this is what we're going to do next now if you look at this the multiplication after multiplication is going into a filter called fft low pass filter Forget about this right now. I'm going to come back to it in a little bit. Uh, now, let's look at this frequency. Uh, this is your FFT low pass uh, filter. I'm not using a simple low pass filter. I'm using a FFT low pass filter. What's the difference between low pass filter and an FFT low pass filter? Simple. If I, I can also use this. That's perfectly fine. I can also use this in place of this. There is nothing wrong with that. But the thing is, this is actually doing computation in frequency domain, which is much faster as compared to this low pass filter, which actually do computation in time frequency, which is a lengthier process. Because use is, uh, it's an FFT filter, which means it's actually dividing, looking at the spectrum and then doing it. This is in time domain. So this is much faster operation. All the stuff is exactly the same. So let me delete this block and let me explain. So now uh, I'm using it as a real tabs. Uh, is a decimation filter and a gain. What do I mean by all of this parameter? And then we're going to look at your cutoff frequency and transition bandwidth. Now, the cutoff frequency basically means it will actually accept all the frequencies from zero hertz all the way up to 500 kilohertz. All right, that's the that's the frequency. And the reason I have 500 kilohertz, I'll explain this in a little bit after I I, I talk about ADC process, is that. All right, so you have 500 kilohertz, so 0 to 500 kilohertz, you will see that it will pass all the frequency. Now, the next thing is transition bandwidth. It will, and it will start rejecting frequency as soon as it reaches above 500 kilohertz. All right, that's what cutoff frequency is. And the reason I've chosen uh, 500 kilohertz, uh, I'll explain this in a little bit. Uh, what about transition bandwidth? So when I look at these ideal filters, the transition bandwidth is normally, if you if you keep it quite steep, I also made a video on it. I'll also leave a link on these filter design. But if you, in an ideal filter, this the, the, the filtering is very steep. And uh, so you want to have that transition. You want to you have that transition from, from from your cutoff frequency to the frequency of rejection what frequency it's going to reject that transition needs to be smooth it should not be sharp that from 500 dot on that you're supposed to just reject all the frequency the transition the curve needs to be a little bit smoother so it doesn't require a lot of computation so that's why i've chosen this value to be about 100 kilohertz uh, so let's look at this operation quickly you will also see this in a same flow graph all right, now let's look at it. When I run this frequency, let's look at the mixer output. Let's leave this now. This is what the red line is. This is shows the uh, frequency transition. Uh, this is shows the FFT filter operation. Let me stop this. And it's supposed to be somewhere. Uh, it's supposed to be exactly somewhere around here, but due to the filter operation, you you can see that this, this filter output is actually occupying some of this uh, of your signal. So it's supposed to be approximately uh, should be the same but due to that filter operation you're seeing this now next step is quite simple uh, the next step the next step is going to be something like this uh, now the red line is actually showing that it's passing all the frequency all right so now let me just simply increase this so now let me change this to let's say 9.7 at 9.7 10 minus 9.7 I have 300 kilohertz 
which is good because if you remember, my uh, cutoff frequency is 500 kilohertz. So it's supposed to pass all the frequencies up till 500 kilohertz. So as you can see, everything is good. And you see, start seeing the rejection here as well because this is also being rejected too because your uh, the red is depicting that your signal amplitude is down. So it is rejecting all the higher frequency component, but it's going to start rejecting all the, after 500 kilohertz, it's start rejecting all the other frequencies as well. But here on this flow graph, this is the red part is actually showing the rejection part of all the upper frequencies. Now let's change this to 9.6. So 10 minus 9.6 is 400 kilohertz still you're seeing all the passing frequency now let's try 9.5 so at 9.5 if you can clearly see that you got some blue stuff going on and it's going to start transition so let's try 9.6 because 10.9.6 10 minus 9.6 is actually uh uh, uh, nine, uh sorry 10.9.4 uh, uh, would give you 600 kilohertz and you can automatically see your blue is up and start rejecting all the frequency. It start going down. This is in red stuff. You can clearly see this. Let me just now. Let's try 9.3. Let's see how much attenuation I'll get. Uh, I'll get so attenuation is not the same, but it actually start um, um, uh, attenuating all the signal, which is in red. So basically, that's that's what it is. Uh, that's that's what happens when you're using these filters. And this is how the filter is working in this flow graph. Now the next thing is this. Uh, what so normally in SDR what happens is this that uh, for example if you take your RTL SDR dongles and things like that uh, I have a higher sample rate which is 40 mega samples so let's say for example if you take an example of your RTL SDR dongle normally it has a sample rate of about 1.8 for a cheaper version and for a better version somewhere around 3.2 let's take that sample rate to be about three one mega samples all right one mega samples and as we know in 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 in, in GNU radio flow graph it actually following this sample rate all around the flow graph now if i look if i were to look at it the sample the sample rate that is coming into this block is actually 40 mega samples but i just want to have i want to depict an adc of of my of my rtl sdr dongle let's say it has a sample rate of one mega sample so what do i need to do in order for me to keep out of those 40 only one mega samples per second i can use keep one in n block all right to in order for me to use that i have used uh, a gui uh, variable block which is decimation that is being called here right here which is 40 all right, the value of this is 40. Why is 40? Because the sample rate that is going into this is about 40, and 40 divided by 40 would give me one mega samples. So, hence, this is depicting uh, my ADC depiction. All right, so so now out of all of those 40 samples having a decimation rate so out of 40 mega samples i'm keeping only one mega samples out of those 40 mega samples i'm keeping only one mega samples so this i'm getting one one mega samples hence i need to change the data rate uh, uh mega uh, uh sample rate of these devices as well so 40 going in keeping only one now my sample rate is one and then i can also divide by 20 as well so i can have a sample rate of two and I can I can divide by uh, so so on and so forth. So this is only keeping about one mega samples per second. So that's why I have to change the sample rate to one mega samples and change this to one mega samples. So now if this is only keeping one mega samples, the filter before that now it will act as an anti-aliasing filter because you want to avoid those aliases as well. Anytime you have a software defined radio architecture design before an ADC, there's always going to be a filter which is going to be an anti aliasing filter which will actually remove all the aliases. Now, key thing is about that keeping this cutoff frequency to 500 kilohertz. Now, let's run this flow graph and I'll show you what that is. All right, so this is the mixer output. So, this is the input signal, this is the mixer output. All right, and now this is the ADC output. Now, if you were to look at your ADC output, Look at my spectrum first. All right, what is the definition of anti-aliasing filter? Sample rate minus the frequency that you're interested in. That's all it is. Uh, absolute value, frequency, sample rate minus your frequency. Now, since I'm only choosing this frequency to be about 500 kilohertz, so I'm only seeing all the values from 0 to 500 kilohertz. All right, 
I hope you're good. So what is the definition of anti-aliasing or alias, uh, aliasing frequency? The definition is sample rate minus absolute value sample rate minus your frequency of interest. Now, if I were to look at this, look, look if I were to look at this, that's why I've chosen this to be 0 to 500 kilohertz. And if I were to look at the full spectrum, I can see also negative, it's going from negative 500 kilohertz all the way up to 500 kilohertz, positive 5 kilohertz. So you're getting an entire sample rate of one mega sample. But we're only seeing the half of this, uh, half of the sample, uh, half of the spectrum, which is from zero to 500 kilohertz. Uh, if you want to visualize this, you can just simply go here, double click on it instead of half, uh, instead of half, you can just do full spectrum, apply, okay. And after pressing OK, what you will see, you will see the full spectrum now. What I was saying earlier, uh, something like this. All right, so let's go to ADC. So now you're seeing all the way from minus 500 kilohertz all the way up to 500 kilohertz. Why? Because we don't care about this. We don't care about the negative part because whatever is happening on the positive part, the same thing is being replicated on my negative part. So that's why we would like to only see the half of the spectrum. So let me just quickly go in and change this to half of this spectrum, and I'll explain that what it is. So let's run this flow graph now and quickly look at my ADC. So we're looking at um, 10, uh, so 500. So let, let's, let's think of it like this, 100 minus 0.8, uh, because this is 0.8, so 100 minus 0.8, or or if you were to even look at this, the mixer output, your mixer output, your your signal is supposed to be 10 minus 9.8 at about 200 kilohertz at your ADC output. One megahertz, if you were to take an entire spectrum, one megahertz minus 0 0.8, 800 kilohertz, you will get 200. Now, when I change this to 9.7, one megahertz, the entire spectrum. Uh, the entire uh, uh, frequency spectrum, uh, for example, the entire sample rate, which is one mega samples, minus 9.8, which is supposed to give you 200 kilohertz. This is what you're seeing right now at the output of your ADC. Now, when I try 9.7, I would see what 300 kilohertz, and this is exactly what seeing at what we're seeing at the mixer output as well, 300 kilohertz. Now, here comes the aliasing part. Now, uh, 9.6. So 1 minus 9.6, I would see it at 400 kilohertz, 9.5, I would see it at 500 kilohertz, and 9.4. Now, 1 mega samples minus 0.4, should, I supposed to see that frequency at 600 kilohertz, all right? But I'm not going to see that because I don't have a spectrum at 600 kilohertz. Now, what I would see, I would see this at 400 kilohertz. So this is where the aliasing will take place. So it will keep, so having an anti-aliasing anti filter, instead of seeing those aliasing frequency at 600 kilohertz, you start seeing those frequency within that spectrum range that you have chosen uh, this to be at, uh, based on the ADC that you're working with. So so that's the idea behind this uh, filter that how does ADC, anti-aliasing and mixer works together uh, in order for you to have a, a down sampling or a receiver design, just like an RTLSDR dongle, uh, or anything, something similar to even Hack RF 2. So I hope you like the small tutorial on this. And if you have any questions, uh, leave it in a comment section. Uh, and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. And thanks for watching.